Good morning, I am Designer Dave, and today I want to talk about NDAs. These are called, uh, these are non-disclosure agreements, and why I think they're really bad for the game industry and why they should be gotten rid of entirely. So I've seen a number of NDAs over my time, and basically they just say that you cannot talk about what you're working on or any of the ways that you're working on things, and uh, they've been a horrible nuisance uh, throughout my early industry years. And these days, uh, when I have the power to negotiate, I always make sure that I don't have an NDA. And uh, most people think that they are just a way to prevent people from revealing company secrets, like about how they operate and stuff. But it's a little bit more than that in that it can be extrapolated to mean anything about what you're working on or doing. And sometimes these things have like two year tails or four year tails on them, meaning that even after a game is shipped, you might not be able to talk about anything you did with the game. Those tend to be unenforceable in a court of law, but just the threat of the litigation is there and sometimes keep prevents people from speaking about the work that they've done and thus prevents them from potentially getting better jobs than they might have gotten at other studios if they were able to talk about those things. But uh, <clears throat> there's some key problems with NDAs, and I think they should be obsoleted and removed from the game industry. And, and here's, here's that list, basically. So the, the first biggest issue with them is simply that they prevent information exchange between colleagues at different studios, but also between uh, you and anyone else who you might want to discuss a problem with that you might be working on. And this is particularly bad for designers who might want to brainstorm with other designers uh, like say it, you go to the GDC, you go to the game developer conference and you want to talk about a problem with a round table discussion and you can't. So you can, you can always do it in vagaries and talk about it in generalities or express like, oh, this game did something like this. And I'm wondering about how you solved this and this issue, but it always puts you in danger of breaking your NDA. Uh, if you happen to be working on that same feature and, and the company decides, just decides that you're in breach. Um, but even, uh, let's say that you did just tell someone that you're working on this feature, like who is in a position to steal that idea anyways? All, all you're really doing is exchanging the idea and getting the potential to find more solutions to the problem. And I don't, think that sh that should ever be discouraged, <laughs> but it really just prevents you from finding new methods of execution. And, and that's, that's the biggest issue I have with NDAs in general, but reducing that collaboration between colleagues also creates these petty studio rivalries where you don't want to reveal secrets to the enemy studio, just this corporate kind of feel to it that, that is not conducive to a healthy game industry. Overall, I think it's just a net negative for the game industry because it just slows down game creation, idea propagation, and, and it reduces the overall quality of games. I think if everyone were able to information share freely between different studios and on different projects and everything, yeah, sometimes internally between studios, they won't even share information. Microsoft is good about that, but I can't speak to every studio, but I've heard that like, <laughs> but I mean, even Blizzard, when I originally worked there, they, did not necessarily share information between teams. So that, that's something to think about. Um, so the second biggest thing I see with NDAs as a problem, especially in the modern age, is that we live in an information sharing age. We have social media, we've got LinkedIn, we've got YouTube, all of these things have one express purpose, and that is to share information between people, talk about what you're working on, interact with colleagues and discuss you know, how to solve problems. So that's problematic when you have this NDA hanging over your head and it just reduces the overall positive interactions that you could have when talking about something you're working on. So like, e even if I wanted to right now, I can't really talk about what I'm doing on Star Stormgate, but, uh, so I can't really build hype in, in the way that I could, if I could express all the things that we're doing there, but obviously I can't talk about that. That's, that's for the marketing team to do. And that's like, you know, decision by committee. Um, so all of that hype is left with the marketing division for a studio. And this largely ends up with like a corporate feel to it because they're not the ones directly working on these features. So they, there's this sort of shield between the expression of joy that I might have for something that I'm doing 
and what the marketing team might express that as, assuming they even do it themselves. So just in this day and age with like corpo speak and non-genuine expressions of emotions like excitement or joy, they, they get spotted very easily and they feel disingenuous. So it can be very detrimental if you're trying to bring a new product uh, to a new audience and they get that weird, like uncomfortable feeling of like this person who's speaking about this doesn't really know what they're talking about or doesn't really care as much as I think they should. Like you can feel those things these days. We're more in tune with like with live streams and, and YouTube and everything. People are more in tune with those emotions. You feel more empathy for the people that you're getting this information from. And if they don't feel it, then you don't feel it either. So uh, <clears throat> third one, it just makes it difficult, if not impossible, to seek out uh, investors and venture capital. So if I go to a convention and I meet VC people and I can't talk about the specifics of the stuff that would get them excited, like we're revolutionizing in this area or this new feature, no one else has it or has even thought about doing it. Um, they think it's too risky, but here's why it's going to be really good. I can't, I can't talk about that because these, that, that would be a breach of the NDA. So it's just, there's the, the threat of the potential lawsuits, the, the, just anything that might bring in that VC, like that, that job is left only to specific people, um, who don't have those NDAs because they're partial owners of the company. And I understand that that's how corporations work where one person owns the company, so they should get all the things in the decision-making process. But on the other hand, if, uh, you know, Mr. Joe Jameson over there happens to be able to talk to VCs and could express really how the product is going to revolutionize things and bring in money to the company, they, they got an NDA on them, so they can't, uh, not without risking litigation. <clears throat> um, so it really is, it's just like having your hands tied behind your back in certain situations. I know that it's not like, you know, not everyone is going to be in those sort of situations, but it, it can be very frustrating for, um, well, specifically someone like me, but also people who have been in the industry a long time and might have a lot of contacts that they then can't necessarily reach out to. Of course, you can always go to the uh, owners of the company and go, hey, I have these friends and I'd like to bring this idea to them. But in those situations where you're on the spot and you're like at a convention or you happen to run into them, like you basically can't make that elevator pitch with all the stuff that you have available to you. You just sort of have to vague it out and that, that almost never works. So some people will, uh, will take up the corporate think and they'll, they'll say, ah, oh, but Dave, the NDA is just there to, uh, give the company a shield so that they can fire leakers. Well, I mean, like, I don't believe leaking is an issue in the first place, but almost all of these game companies are like, in California or Texas or in special zones of wherever they are located, where they have like some form of at will employment, meaning they can be fired for any reason. And they're usually like special cases anyways, where they can be fired for any reason, at least in the United States, this is the, where most of these NDAs come from anyways. Uh, they have really strong laws that protect the corporation from any sort of lawsuit, it, like a wrongful firing case, like unless the boss put his hands down your pants, you're basically <laughs> you can fire whoever you want. It's a, it's a good example of why we need to unionize uh, as game developers, because I don't think anyone should be fired for excitedly talking about their game. I don't think it, expressing their love for their work or the features that they're working on or how excited they are for something that the the, the company's about to 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 put out there. I I don't think that that should be something someone's fired for. I think that's commendable. If anything else, it's a way for someone to see a genuine expression of interest in something that they're doing and thus feel that genuine love for the product. Something that I think, <clears throat> I don't want to call anyone out, <laughs> but I think everyone, you know, I think everyone knows that like in the old days when, when developers would talk about their stuff, um, it wasn't, there wasn't that layer of corpo speak uh, on top, laid on top of it that uh, makes it feel dis disingenuous. And um, <clears throat> I just think it's, we need to move back towards that more direct line of contact and expression of our interests in what we're working on. 
Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it is, it's just nasty corpo think, uh, like it's another example of how the corporation owns you, your thoughts, your work, and you really have nothing at the end of the day. Um, the moment they decide they're done with you as a developer, you're just, your hands are tied and the moment that they are finished using you for whatever they're, they want, then you're out the door. And, um, I just don't think that NDAs are a positive thing for the work environment, for the way that people should think about their game, for the way that people can express how they're, how much they enjoy what they're working on. Like it's just a net negative. So just to recap NDAs, they prevent information exchange. They reduce the overall quality of games in the industry. As a result, they make a company look corporate and out of touch. Um, they deny games the opportunity to improve and find funding and they undermine the autonomy of developers in general and that's why i think ndas should just not be a thing anymore <laughs> thanks for watching if i don't see you later good afternoon good evening and good night